If you're just like me, and like me for real, then you probably realize that the format's feeling a bit odd, isn't it? Everyone's playing the same deck, and it's just getting a bit repetitive. So today, I'm just gonna shed off my wings and play with a deck that is just fun. We're not trying to win. We're not trying to go on win streaks. We're not trying to get to Arceus. We're just trying to play Pokemon cards and have a good time. That's what this channel's all about. And exactly what this deck is all about. Because today, we're playing with Iron Thorns Destructo Press. So what does the Destructo Press do? 4-2 Lightning Energy. Reveal the top 5 cards. You're taking a 70 damage for each future card you find there. And you discard the future card. And so by throwing in a ton of future cards like Maridon, Iron Crown EX, Iron Bundle, Cypher Maniacs Code Breaking. And you can probably figure out the rest, all the other ones basically. Then you can hit a huge one at KOs with the Iron Thorns. Which for me is just fun. So how about we get in some games of it and see how we do. And a quick shout out to our sponsors. PDCGL Store where you can buy codes to bling out your deck using code FDW for 5% off. TCG Bulk, where you can buy and sell your bulk cards and whatnot. But you can buy and sell collectible Pokemon cards live. And they're even giving you £10 off your first purchase using my special link. Links to all sponsors are in the description below. But for now, let's get going. All right, Penny Kings, a Giratina. Hopefully it's an Arctina, because that actually can be quite fun to play against. There's a grass on the Tina. Is it just going to be a pass? No, Forest Seal Stone. Wait, they got a stone? Why is Bro got a Forest Seal Stone in a Tina? That's weird. I mean, even in Arctina, that one doesn't make any sense. But sure thing. Let's do that. And I'm just going to go for... I don't know. Wasn't too short on that because they clearly are bricking a little bit. But I'm just blown away by that Forest Seal Stone. I don't know what Blood's doing. Either way, we just get all the thorns, which is exactly what we want. Let's just, just throw them all down, mate. Except I now have no energy and I'm just going to be in a passing simulator. Typical stuff, isn't it? PDCGL, ruining my fun of playing card games already. Who cares? Heavy ball coming in and they get a comfy. So it is guaranteed a comfy. I, but why the stone? Bro, if they stone, that's so nice because it means we don't get Star Requiem. But then again, like, does it actually matter? Well, actually it does if we get Crown EX down. But actually, I've also got to stop fidget. I have a bloody Rubik's Cube that I can't solve so I don't know how to do it. But here we are. Should put that down because it's the most fidgety thing I have and it's just going to be picked up by the mic and it probably has been. So yeah, uh, it's just what it is. So we do have a decent energy count, but we don't have the best draw power. Our main draw supporter is... Well, there's Iono, there's Miriam, and then there's also Cypher. But Cypher doesn't draw you anything off the top deck. Cypher's really good if you can attack, because you just guarantee 140 damage straight away. And that's where things get really fun. But we need energy <laughs> to actually start doing that, you know? I was hoping the Iono would give us not four thorns, because apparently PC Joe doesn't know how to code shuffling. Right, there is a car res. Finally, they decided what to pick. Got rid of the switch cut and an artisan. Must have been a tough one, huh? Oh, there's a Sableye down. Hello. I just got a bit seeking here. Risky move, but I guess they got to, right? I also am dead drawing, so, you know, it is what it is. But an energy would be so nice, because I could possibly, in fact, likely Oko this Giratina. But that's a big if, right? Because we are just top decking. No draw right now. The deck's going backwards. It's a rod. Unfortunate. Right, I'm just going to retreat into this then. Just give him a thorns, and then I can Miriam next turn if it goes down. And if they boss KO it, I can always get this one as well. So it's it's not the end. Right, Kara's coming through. But usually this deck is a lot faster. Yeah, a lot faster. Bad draw. Uh, in fact, today, I think... Uh, I say I think. No, I'm going to say for the first time with absolute certainty. Today in recording, I have tried recording two other decks before this one, by the way. In fact, one that went so bad, I genuinely thought about quitting. Right, not quitting obviously fully, but just taking a break. I legit thought that because the draws were so unfathomably bad and it seems to be a continuing trend here. I don't know what to do. I'm playing different decks. It's clearly not the decks. I am just getting the worst draw I've ever seen in my life. And I can say that with absolute certainty. Usually I go, I think maybe there's time for, maybe I'm not thinking about it. Nah, this has been a record for me of the worst possible draw I've ever seen um, in, 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 a, in, a, in a stretch of time. You know, sometimes it's on and off, hot and cold and all that. But this has been un just almost demoralizingly bad. Iono, though, I will take that. So let's just Iono. If we don't get an energy, then it proves the, the, the streak is still nice and hot. There you go. The streak is lovely. It's warm just as much as me on the toilet. I don't, I don't like that smell. But there you go. Proof, proof, proof in the pudding, mate. Absolute proof in the pudding. I'm just going to end my turn. But I'm going to try be zen, be zen. Not not be annoyed because I got very annoyed last game. I got very annoyed the last deck I was trying to record because I had this exact same problem and it's happening again. But I'm just trying to main calm and just, just, just take in, out. That, I'm just going to in, 
And take it, take a breather. Let it, let it go. Let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. Can you just take out my thorns? That'd be nice. No boss. Just let me have my Bibaro. Bibaro is really nice there. Bibaro um, really does help. Okay, Shred. Cool. So we keep the energy. That's fine. And now I can guarantee it. I have the code breaker. That's fine. Uh, kind of don't want to bench me crowns. You, you, I don't want them being this far ahead of the prizes and then giving them crowns. That feels terrible. So, oh, we get the top deck. See, now you're just being nice. All right, let's ultra ball and get rid of these two. And then what I'm going to do is now just try and just <laughs> have a bit more security on my board state here. All right, let's go for a incisors first. I then want to cipher some Pokemon or some future cards. And that's just that. Um, Okay, not great. I'm going to put this down. Then I'm going to go for Cypher Maniac. I'm going to put two crown on top of the deck and just delete them. We need literally, well, not literally, but we do need, is it two? No, 70, yeah, we need two more. Oh God, yeah, maybe I should have, maybe I should have put one crown down for the deck. I, we fine, watch, we're getting a KO instantly, see? But when I tell you, an Oko, nobody's business. That's what I'm talking about. Just give me, give me some, give me some generators. Wasn't the right, generators, some generators? Uh, no generators, okay. But that's what I've been wanting to see today. Some Iron Form Swings. If I got energy, a couple turn sooner we would actually kind of have a good running here but we are now on the back end unfortunately because of those unfortunate times <laughs> times yes turn times times to tell oh, the how the turns have tabled all right they're gonna retreat into comfy and go for a flower selecting they're at 10 now and by the way i've seen a weird uptick in lost box decks on the ladder a very, very strange uptick. And I think people are realizing it's still kind of broken. I think people have, have, have like, kind of forgotten, tried out the new decks, kind of figured out where they were. And the majority of Lost Box players who tried out new things went, I I'm just going to go back to playing Lost Zone decks because they're just... You're bossing? I mean, bro, you're keeping my attackers flowing. So, don't know about that. Oh, wait, they just whiff? No, shot. Okay. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. Right, we have loads of Pokemon. So, that's Miriam just absolutely being wonderful for us. I don't know if I played any Switch cards. I don't know if I forgot. But yeah, I can just guarantee the Switch here, actually, with a Cypher if I do play it. So let's try that. I forgot to play Switch. <laughs> I forgot to play Switch. Ah, uh, uh, cut generators as well. Okay. I guess I just made, changed the whole build of my deck. Okay. I do have a Turo. There is Turo. So I guess there's no harm in that. Could also get a counter catch. Yeah. Let's just, let's just, let's just put them two there. Throw an energy down. I'm tempted to ultra away Miriam and Rod, but that kind of feels wrong. Yeah, I'm just going to dash this inside as the Turo. And then from there, just pick it up if they try and do a whole, you know, the barrel stick play, which I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're doing that here. There's a flower selection. Now, the reason why I wouldn't even want to, I, I built the Thorns deck, right, was because of pre-release. Pre-release, I literally played Maraid on Thorns and it was kind of good. Now, that's obviously nothing to do with the format. It's completely different, but it, yeah, here the Destructo Press just feels like a vibe. I, you know, it does. And for those who played them a ride on Thorns in pre-release, you know it. It's 100% true. Um, so yes, it's just it's just pure vibes. That's all. That's that's the only reason. Uh, right, they are going to go for a Moonlight Shuriken, interesting enough. Thank God we have the Turo. Um, I'm going to do that and just go for a Super Rod, I think. It just gets some energy because I think they're just trying to, yeah, take me out like this, make sure I don't retreat. And that's why Turo is useful here. So I think first things first, we pick it up. Uh, I kind of was hoping they get a KO in some strange way. And then I can go for a counter catch, but no. Let's just go for a Rod. And I think I'm just going to recover some Pokemon, literally. Just, just get some Pokemon back um, and just increases my Destructo Press. So let's go for it. And we do hit weakness as well. So we should be fine. Yeah, there we go. 560. <laughs> God, it's a strong boy, isn't it? It's a, it's, a, it's a strong, strong attacker. See, this is why we want two prizes, right? We don't we don't want no shenanigans. We want to take out two prize Pokemon. But then again, like if, we, if we're constantly in a single prize matchup, then we should be all right. That said, Sableye's going to come out and they're going to go, oh, look at me. I can just get rid of everything. And then I'll be like, fine. I'll just recover everything and go again. And I might actually need to get crown you know if, if i get one crown in play plus a a, a a future booster capsule then i can actually ko sableye while simultaneously charging some horns so we still are in this funnily enough oh there it is that's sableye i say we're still in this we have three prizes to take it's 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 not really gonna be like that is it we are gonna lose the game but I don't care. I played the more fun deck. You're playing the boring one. And that's all I care about. Look at me. I'm more cool than you. <laughs> all right, there you go. Save light coming in. So they can put two damage counters elsewhere now. They might put it on Bidoof, maybe. Oh, would you look at that? I have an absolute master brain. No, it's just kind of an obvious choice, isn't it? So I'm going to try and bring up Tina, I think. Last turn now, Iono. That'd be kind of cool. They're going to be able to retreat it. I'd love to be able to Iono just hit up Tina, right? Just give it a little, hey, you remember me? But I think I need to Miriam. I need to get, I need to get my, uh, my my fawns back. I need to get my boys back. And I'll get a crown as well. Because I could do some stuff with that. There you 
you go. Lovely jubbly. Except I don't have any energy. So we're gonna, be, we're gonna be wary about that. I'm gonna have to like fully thin my hand down here, but I'm gonna go for a fawn. We lose anyway, right? So I think, oh, I could bundle. A bundle of joy. No, no, no. I think we go for the fawns. And basically I need an energy and a thingy my bob. You know, the, the tool card, that one, which are probably very unlikely to see, I think. We have two in there, five energy. I mean, it's possible. I have to KO save. Actually, I don't have to KO save lie, do I? No, but if I do, then I can actually win next turn. Okay. Yeah, because I could then just counter catch. All right, uh, we'll, we'll see. And no, <laughs> of course not. All right, let's just bring up Matina anyway. Yeah, of course, we're just going to get a bunch of future Pokemon now. We've brought them all back in the deck, so that's that's fair. There's a Colrez coming in. Get rid of a Tina and a Mirage Gate. Super Rod coming in, covering some energy there. And I'm just going to attack Matina. That's not bad, actually. It's not a bad shout, is it? Yeah, I think they're going to attack Matina. And there's, I don't think there's a single way for me to win here. So I'm just going to go and scoop, take the L. And you know what? Yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? Lost Box, you're just going to lose pretty much every time if you play a turbo kind of build. All right, here I'm going first. I think we are playing Iron Hands Box, which actually is a bad matchup, but hey-ho. So let's see what we can do here. I think we get rid of the Cypher, I think. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of Cypher here, actually, because I'm probably just going to Iona next turn and just get myself... Do I just double thought? Oh, no. Do I get my ride on? Or do I just try and go straight for the Fawn? I'm going to go straight for the Fawn, actually. Let's try this out. Let's see how this uh, how this, how this this vibes for us. And I think I'm going to keep the Crown in play. I'll throw a booster capsule on it, but I think I'm just going to hold that. And then just Iona next turn, hopefully hit an energy. Then it's a Techno Radar coming in. We get rid of a future capsule. We get my on and a Hands in. I'm going to bench some my on. So we actually have a bad matchup here, funny enough. I mean, look, we can... If they come up with Hands, we can one it KO it. So it still is kind of that beat stick prize trade um, of two prizes for two prizes, but um, me opening up on a single prize isn't that great. I get Iono's, but I was planning to anyway, so that's okay. That could actually help. Um, actually, that's nice, because that just guarantees a KO, but I don't know if that's what I want right now. I think I'd rather try and hope for a situation where I can just get a Bidoof and a bit barrel out. is really good here. Um, I feel like if I attack with Thorns, I'm just going to lose just outright, you know what I mean? Because I'm not going to keep up, so I need to come up with a on, take a swing, get my Thorns going, so that way, eventually, I'll be able to come up and just, they'll take, they'll take two prizes, but I can just respond. Oh, Iona as well. I think I might, you know. I think I might. Well, it really depends where I want to commit this energy, though, because I can just take Iron Thorns KO. don't think it actually really matters. Let me, let me, let me think. I could also just work towards a Megaton Lariat, but that won't do it. Oh, I could actually get a... Oh, okay, I'm going to go for this. If I get one more crown, I think I actually get a KO whilst charging up form, which actually is the ideal situation, I think. So one more crown would do it. Whoa, I mean, get it. Don't get me wrong. It's a bit risky, but it might actually pay off. So I'm just going to get rid of... I think I'm going to get rid of the boost. The, the grin... Oh, God, all of these are good cards. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of the... Oh, they're all good. I'm going to get rid of a bit barrel. Screw it. Get a crown. And that actually means we hit 120, which takes the K whilst charging up thorns, which is actually the best possible scenario because I wanted to carry this Maraidon on and then be able to just guarantee I can respond. Look, it's still not looking great, but if this Iron Hands can't get the baton on, we could definitely just just soar ahead, if you know what I mean. Oh, they could also just get a boss KO on my uh, my my thingy, my bob, my crown as well, which would be quite devastating if they get the ampy very much there. So it's still anyone's game, but the, the thorns is uh, being a bit of a threatening boy, huh? He's uh, he like he like he's, he's, he's big, he attacks, and he's threatening. They also have boss, so if they whiff it, mad, <laughs> absolute madness. Another crown. Okay, so they they're pretty much just committing here, aren't they? You have to get baton though. You have to get baton, otherwise I just start flying, mate. Uh, generate. Oh, that's all great. Fine, you have an on me, but I should theoretically hit a 1 8 KO here. I'm actually might just go for a power pad as well, just to like increase the odds by like one extra card. They're gonna restart for one though. So if this Donnie finds a bloody ah oh god, they could they could find a prime catch by the way. That's my concern right now, or even a counter. So it's still like still very bad. Let's see. There's a generator. They might not even need the bloody the the, the baton with this rate hitting these gens and that. You know what I mean? Up, oh, they've got baton. Okay, so the game now changes, and they are in favor of winning here now, purely because I had to take the... If you think about the Roaring Moon matchup and how Roaring Moon, um, if you take out, if you're in the mirror and you take out Emil Peko, you have to somehow find a way to change, change that prize trade. Otherwise, the way the game works, you're just going to lose because they're taking, they have more prizes uh, taken than you. And if you're trading evenly, then obviously it's just not good. Right. So enough yapping on. Let's go for this. Let's go for this play here. And I'm going to rod and just recover these two back. Why am I talking like I even have the KO? You know what I mean? Ah, who gives a damn? Let's just go for a Destructo press. And oh God. <laughs> What's wild is I hit one and I still hit 170. Absolutely mental. But we are going to lose this game because every deck in this format destroys anything that isn't also incredibly good. So I was mentioning in the video, by the way, where I was just having a bad time. And this is continuing now, unfortunately. I've just kind of given up caring. I just don't care anymore. 
I just want to have fun. And if I have fun losing, I have fun losing. I don't give a damn. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm sick of trying to promote a deck as if it's going to win every matchup when it feels like right now, the top tier decks are miles ahead of anything remotely rogue. It feels like that. As, as someone who's done this for six years now, I have never felt such a gap between top tier and rogue since ADP. And that might be only for this short period of time because obviously we need to wait for EYC to, to do its thing and see how things develop. But it really has felt like you either play the top tier or you don't play anything. It really has that vibe. Also, it could be that because it might be because I'm very high up on the rank. Um, and that usually means I just match up against the top tier and also the best players at the same time. Meaning even trying something different just means you'd lose. <laughs> it really feels like that. I'm honest, man. I'm being honest. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you might be experiencing that yourselves if you are on the higher tier. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is kind of it coming through. But as I said, I just don't care. I, and it sounds a bit, you know, a bit negative, but I'm trying to actually let go of trying to build a good deck because that's where I'm going to go wrong. I'm going to go wrong in trying to have fun. Uh, not sorry, trying to have fun. Of course, I'm trying to have fun. I'm going to go wrong in trying to build things that are going to beat the best decks. When I've realized recently, I don't think I can. Not because of my own skill or my own ability to build. Maybe there's a part in that, but because it just feels like anything remotely rogue just cannot stand up to the pace, the, 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 the power, the speed of decks in this format. That's what I've come to the conclusion of uh, over the past few days of making videos. Right, you saw with my Torterra. Demolished, because it was just too slow. Obviously, it was a bad list as well. I'll, I'll agree to that. Goldengo, really fast. Draws massive hands. Sweeps decks sometimes. But if you ain't got that top tier power and consistency, it just feels almost useless trying anything else. And obviously, I can't do that because that means I'm only going to upload six decks and then not upload until the next set. You know what I'm saying? Because then that's all it's going to be. So I'm not going to care about winning. I could lose in every single video for the rest of this format and still play games and still upload because I don't really care about winning anymore. I care about enjoying myself. And if I have to force myself to limit my um, my my videos to very good decks that are like boring, then no, I'm not going to do that. I never have. There you go. You see what I'm saying? It's just the same decks all the time. <laughs> it's just like you can't win. So you, you, you kind of see my point here. Look, ultimately, I'm going to get better at adjusting to the format over time. Every rotation, I've, I kind of have this experience of having a very good time playing the new like meta decks. But when it comes to building Rogue, I usually have a tough time uh, because it struggles to come to grips with the format as it's changed. So this is just natural and this is something that I will always go through. So usually you're going to see videos where, yeah, I'm just going to lose a lot of games and then I'll have to learn and adapt and um, over time start to readjust how I build my decks. And that happens all the time. So yeah, that's going to be the nature of it. But I am not playing Iron Crown every game. You know what I mean? It's boring. It's dead. It's unfun. Um, and that's kind of... You were seeing it here, right? Repetition. So much repetition. Also, what the hell? <laughs> Bro, at least give me something. Um, yeah, it's just a ton of repetition. And uh, I ain't about that life. I literally made this channel. My first ever deck was a Mewtwo GX with Lunala GX. Terrible deck, terrible card, but that was fun to me. And I'm not going to change. Or that, that's always what's been fun to me, right? A lot of people wonder like, uh, and have asked how I can make so many road decks, keep doing road decks. I find it fun. That's it. There's, there's no secret answer. I, it's entertaining to me. And if the format makes it so I am going to have a harder time doing that, then screw it. I'm just going to keep doing it because that's what I find fun. Otherwise, the ultimate outcome, which is what happens during the ADP era, mind you, was I end up just quitting the game because I stop enjoying it. So that's something to bear in mind. Right, I'm going to end turn here. We actually have a pretty thankful situation where my opponent has been dead drawing and giving me time to at least come back. So that's fine. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Paid actor for sure. <laughs> but I'd love to hear like in the comments what your experience has been like. Granted, right now, all of this has been my own experience. I feel based on my games that I've played, that the format has become stable. Now, other people are going to disagree, right? Other people see the game differently. They see the game through its more nuanced way. The game is extremely different to the rotation before because there's new decks and new decks have all these minuscule interactions in each matchup that determine how it's going to go and increase your odds of winning or losing, right? Of course, they go for my Bidoof. Um, and some people find that enjoyable and therefore would say the format isn't stale. There's so much going on. Um, even on the rogue element, right? There's so many new decks to build. What I mean by stale is I'm playing against the same decks over and over and over again. It's stale to play against those decks. 
the, the actual variety of the decks isn't stale. It's just that people keep playing the same decks. And I can't even be mad at that. If it's going to do well for you and you like it, you're going to play it. So there's this kind of, I guess th this is my perspective on that whole debate, right? Is the format stale or is it not? You know, I, I honestly think it's just people are playing the same decks all the time because they like it. And that results in some sort of stale of feeling, I guess. And at the same time, people are playing against those decks all the time, you know? Like, again, you've seen just two hands literally off the bat. They are in a row. And that's probably because the person playing it right now is enjoying it and doing well with it. So they're going to keep going with it because they want to rank up, right? And so it's just an interesting experience um, where a couple of things have shifted us into that direction. So first off would be the rank change. People are taking rank far more seriously, which means they're far less likely to experiment and try new things on the rank ladder and are instead going to casual to do that stuff. And when they go on ranks, they're playing the deck they are pretty confident they're going to win with and win with fast. Hence why you see a lot of future hands and ancient box on the ladder because they win games fast. Well, actually, yeah, no, the, the ancient box does win game fast. It just, it just decks itself out very fast at the same time. But that's the experience, right? That is the experience. Also, they get literally same as last game. They get this. We just lose on prize trade. Unfortunate, but I'm playing a fawns in a meta where everyone is obsessed with iron hands and iron hands is coming in, becoming that card. I told you ages ago when people said I had a bad take, it's not good for the game. It's it's becoming there. It's getting there. Slowly. Slowly. I know it's still not anything too overwhelmingly broken. Um, right. Let's, let's just bundle. Let's, let's, actually, no, let's not. That was a bad idea. <laughs> just press. Let me just start pressing. And we actually do get a KO, thankfully, because of the, um, the the crowns. But they get Patom, which means they're just going to hand me back and I can't do anything about it. So, yeah, I know this video is less of an Iron Fawns video. I'm sure a lot of you clicked on this video to see Iron Horns dominate some decks, but the ladder doesn't allow it. It's, 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 it's Honestly, that is as simple as that. If you took this Iron Fawns deck and went onto the ladder, you're going to lose more than you're going to win because the, the ladder, right? <laughs> this is the hands gatekeep, right? The hands gatekeep, I guess you could say. If you're playing some more evolution tankier decks, then you've got the Roaring Moon EX to gatekeep that. And this is what I'm saying. The more I speak, the more I realize that tweet I made a long time ago that were on three particular EX cards. One of them I was definitely wrong about. It was when Iron Hands, Roaring Moon EX, and Iron Valiant came out. I made a post saying that they are bad for the game and it's not a good thing. And everyone went at me. Everyone at me saying it's a terrible take, it's a bad take. Don't know what you're talking about. I feel like now, as a rogue deck creator, that's coming true. Where if I build something that's a bit, you know, more single prize based, you run into future hands, you just lose. If future hands is popular, you're going to lose all the time playing it, which it now clearly is. And then if you play something a bit more, you know, evolution based, and I guess you could say tanky in that perspective, as you saw with the Roaring, uh, with the Torterra, then you're also going to run into an equally popular deck, which is the Moon. And then again, you're going to just have a bad time. And even involved running into hands is a bad time. I feel like the one at KO plus extra prize mechanics are, you have to treat them carefully and they are getting very good very quick. Uh, at least on a rogue deck perspective, not a meta perspective. I want to make that very clear. I failed. Uh-oh. I want to make that very clear because people misconstrue my opinions with my opinion on the meta in a tournament level. I've never been to a tournament. Stop taking my opinion like that. Take my opinion as someone who plays the PDCGL ladder every day and makes rogue decks for a living. That's how you should perceive my opinion, not on the basis of someone who plays professionally, because I don't. Anyway, rant over. Don't think we won a single game, but this is the experience I'm having with almost every rogue deck I'm building, by the way. I'm just not winning. <laughs> you could say it's skill. You could say it's attention. You could say loads of things, but I've been doing this for six years, okay? You don't just go from being all right and having moments to just suddenly losing all the time, no matter what you try, unless you play top tier decks without there being a reason. And I think there's a few ranked being me being highly ranked. And you know, those reasons I've mentioned, it's an interesting topic. We'd love to hear your comments. And so I apologize to you who clicked on this deck, wanted to see uh, Thorns take some dubs, no dubs today. In fact, the build, I, I, I was surprised they even, uh, not even, no, I wasn't surprised they even saw the barrel. I was surprised with how little I saw the barrel actually um, with this stuff. But then again, this deck isn't really anything special. It just wanted to take some massive KOs and we did that. So I'm happy with that. But yeah, I apologize for the, it's, I didn't really clickbait. This, the intention of the video was to just play Iron Thorns. And then it could just kind of translated into that conversation I was having. So I want to give a bit of a preface here. In this meantime, as the format gets figured out uh, before EYC, as EYC starts coming through, give me time, give me time to adjust and try and figure things out and go from there. Right now, it does feel just not great as a rogue content creator. On my perspective, other creators might think differently, but on my perspective, it's not good. It's not good. It really isn't. But as always, things improve. So we try and keep a positive perspective and try and push forward. But uh, as a rogue creator, again, not as a professional. I don't go to tournaments to play. As a rogue content creator, Roaring Moon 
and iron hands feels like it's very, very bad. And that is my opinion I currently have until the format starts to take more shape. And a huge thank you to the channel members for supporting the channel. If you want to become a member yourself, click the join button down below to see all the perks and all the tiers where you can get exclusive content and the like. But we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for the support, guys. See you later.